Hello everyone, this is Dan. We wanted to put out a sample of what you could have over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcasts. And so we chose to put out our Curse Content by Committee review of Good Burger that we recorded back uh, much earlier this year. Um, I know a lot of people wanted to watch that, weren't sure if they wanted to sign up for the Patreon, so we just wanted to make it freely available for people to check out. And if they want the commentary, then, you know, the commentary for that and all of our other Curse Content by Committee episodes is available on our Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast, or as few would say, you can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcasts and, you know, become a podlord. Or maybe just back us for $5 a month, get reviews, get commentary, stuff like that, and get to vote on what movies we watch for the Curse Content by Committee. In any case, we hope you enjoy this free episode. Hello, and welcome to Cursed Content by Committee, the show where you pick the knife. With me, as always, are Dan and Bob Video Games from Gigaboots.com. Hi, Mr. Feel. How's this going? Hey, guys. Hey, Mr. Feel. How you guys doing? Doing good. All right, I guess. And KZ Excellent from KZExcellent.com. We're vegan. Hey, don't track us with you. No, no, his channel. I'm on a Nutri-Grain kick. Don't worry about it. Me and Dan have hamburgers in our mouth right now because the movie we're watching for this show is Good Burger. <laughs> Here's my logic. I don't know where your burger's from. I guess I'll ask that first. Feel, where is your burger from? Uh, McDonald's, because I felt it had the right energy for Good Burger. See, I, I got mine for Burger King because I thought the only way to make this movie better is to eat a bad burger. Thus, it will go from Good Burger to even better burger. That's, that's solid logic. It's pretty solid logic. I thought I ha- I I sought to recapture the energy of our heroes in this movie and if if they were Burger King they wouldn't be the heroes. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Don't you think you're being a little too mean? Mm, no. I mean, mm. McDonald and Burger King are both like have similar evil energies. I don't know about that. I I side on the side of McDonald's constantly, but I haven't bitten into this Whopper Junior yet. I feel like it's going to be 50% condiments by mass. That's how. The other 50% is poison. (laughs) (laughs) And a syringe. (laughs) Uh, Burger King, this burger you gave me, it has a syringe in it and a used condom. Don't worry about it. That's that's the recipe. You knew what you were getting when you came here. I think you're describing Wendy's instead. (laughs) No. (laughs) Yeah, Wendy's is like. Yeah, there's there's dirt in it, but we're smug on Twitter. <laughs> Fucking buy it, animal. <laughs> there's dirt, but we didn't freeze the dirt. Come on, we're reasonable. Yeah, but we're smug about it and we floss, so <laughs> you can't hate us. Um, hey, Bob. What's up? I, we got to talk about this before we go into the movie. What are your expectations? Uh, I, I expect this to be the best movie we've watched on this show. Oh, my God, that's not all. <laughs> that isn't the high bar. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, I've never seen all that, so, you know, I'm I'm excited. <laughs> Uh, uh, all I know from Good Burger is it's the home of the Good Burger. That's it. So, you know, this could be anything. This could be amazing. We heard our friend Jim Rackgazer before we uh, started recording this, and uh, he <laughs> he seemed a bit pessimistic on the movie. So now I'm not sure what to expect. I'm a little mixed. But I, too, believe it will be the best movie we've watched for this series. I think it'll do great on our negative five to five scale. If we're rating it compared to other movies made from skits on variety shows, <laughs> I think it is probably above the Coneheads movie. Oh, I don't man, know. we got what? a Coneheads. The Coneheads movies, <laughs> those are good. That's, that's a... Coneheads is raw. Cone- Ladies, Ladies Man is also... I, don't, I haven't seen Ladies Man, so I don't know how that is. But I, honestly, guys, I have to say... Uh, Sketch comedy television for children is just about the lowest form of human art. Uh, basically breaking through to subhuman territory. I don't know. Just wait, just wait. Good Burger 2 is going to happen. There's a disturbingly large chance that Good Burger 2 is going to happen. So, KZ, have you watched this movie recently? Uh, is 1999 recent? No. No. Okay. I think I, think I watched it on VHS when I was sick in like 2003 when VHS players still existed. Okay, so I watched this movie when I was sick in uh, 2013, so I've watched it the most recent of anyone. 
Why? Why did you watch it in 2013? Because they stopped having Inspector Gadget on Netflix? Look, man, I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brendan Fraser. Man, I wish. I like the part in that movie where Inspector Gadget is like, I gotta get home before my parents get home. That movie... That movie's troubling, but let's not talk about that movie or focus on that movie. I think we should just go ahead and head into Good Burger. Home of the Good Burger. See you guys after the movie. Arf. And we're back. <gasps> you can notice how we don't sound like death. This was a very different experience from <laughs> kick Asia and Suburban Nights. I'm not used to this. It was a real movie, guys. Well, what happened To feeling here? alive after? We we let them select from a set of knives and our audience just gave us a hug? I don't understand. It's not how any of yeah. our retro game roulette streams go. It was like a rubber knife. I'm just kidding. That's kind of how all those go. They gave us a, a Star Wars tor- toy lightsaber and just telescopes. Like, that didn't hurt at all. <laughs> that didn't hurt at all. And then he cracks it open over the back side of your head. Oh, no. Destroys but your we car. We watched Good Burger. And if you don't know what Good Burger is, I have prepared a summary for you. <laughs> Good Burger is a 1997 movie written by a foot fetishist and starring Keenan and Kel. Keenan and Kel, employees of Good Burger, must save their place of work from the evil Mondo Burger, a rival burger joint run by a cartoonish sociopath. Shaq and Sinbad are also there. So, Dan, what did you think of Good Burger? <laughs> Feel, thank you for that summary. I feel like you saved everyone about an hour and 42 minutes and a few odd seconds. He Somewhere shitted, he farted, uh, and he peed it. <laughs> Still go see them. Still go watch the movie, though. Watch our commentary. For it. <laughs> you paid for it. Yeah, that'd be like not taking half your groceries from the store. Go, go, go watch that. Admittedly, you have to find a way to watch Good Burger, but go watch that. Just fucking do the I mean, commentaries. You can, you can find it on YouTube. It's fine. It's a fine time. I like how you can find it on YouTube makes it sound like you can find it a legitimate said, upload on YouTube. Rent it on YouTube. <laughs> I said rent. I thought you said fine. Um. Now, as you all should know, since we're speaking exclusively to delightful patrons at this point, Curse Content Club believes in a negative five to five scale. As such, I give Good Burger a four. I can't give it my highest score. I can't. <laughs> what would have crossed, made it cross the gap up to five for you? I don't know. If we somehow accidentally watched the movie Drive, I would have given it a five. <laughs> I just need two cruise control. <laughs> Who leave, knows? Leave it room. Oh man, it had a speed esque element. It to did. It. Bob was speed better than. I think. What is we, the What is the mm. film that can surpass Good Burger, Dan? Is it? Casey, why bring this evil Cut in that. here? Cut that. I'm cutting it. <laughs> Don't worry. You know, maybe I'll just stop this file. We'll delete 20. it just to be safe and start all over again. <laughs> no. I'll keep doing it. <laughs> um, I don't know, but I don't want to think that Good Burger is the peak of this series. I feel like we're going to find a real hidden gem out there. We're all going to love it. I've been in the rough. Mm-hmm. But Good Let's Burger was score. an excellent film. It was. It had some surprisingly good writing. It had some surprisingly good cinematography. It uh, had a few actual actors. I am shocked by how well produced this kids movie is. Considering it's a spinoff of a sketch comedy show for children, which might be the lowest form of entertainment. Bob, I'm interested in your opinion. As someone who is not familiar with all that, what was your opinion on the movie? You know, I- I'm glad I didn't really seem to need, like, some prior knowledge of all that. It's <laughs> 19 it's- different internet movie critics. <laughs> right, it's a very different experience from anything else we've experienced on this show. Yeah. It's very much not what I expected. I can just jump right in and... It's just about a burger joint, and it's it's a I, I legitimately laughed at it a few times. Like it's yeah. it's an enjoyable movie. Yeah, we laughed a lot, and it wasn't out of cruelty. It was because the movie was right. right. Used to we, going back to content from the '90s and not being appalled over their cruelty. <laughs> I mean, sometimes the jokes were very cruel. I don't know what you're talking about. We weren't cruel when we laughed. That that twelve year old that twelve year old girl being dragged along the pavement didn't actually seem to mind all that much. 
Right? It was it was hilarious. I mean, there was the part yeah, where just like uh, Bob. <laughs> where what was what was her fucking name, KZ? Hmm. Carmen Electra. Yes. Oh, when God. Carmen Electra s- slams her head into the dashboard of a car, and then uh, Kel Mitchell judo throws her, and she's in a cast and on a crutch in the next scene. Could be considered criminal. No, you no. know why? Because he was pulling a Mr. Magoo, yeah, and was, she was a bad guy, and he magooed her ass. Was just good she old, was a 45-year-old pedophile trying to seduce this 17-year-old guy. Good old life. slapstick humor, okay? Yep. <laughs> Judo throws. <laughs> uh, Kel's final joke was quite good. It was. Mm-hmm. I like... Uh, I, I don't know, Bob. That seemed yeah. more like Aikido to me. <laughs> he strikes me as an Aikido man. Yeah, I'm sure he just takes Aikido. Yeah. 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 The opening featured stop motion which, animation, which, is, which I did not which expect. Which is weird. It started edging into a sledgehammer vibe. Is they made burgers on the floor. Hey, <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but don't bring it up. <laughs> but yeah, it was neat. Um, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and give a four out of five as well, because I'm going to leave room to grow. Yeah, same. like I feel like there's possibility of something slightly better, but there's also a possibility of something way better. So if I any, can't make it. A sr- if anything, Gigaboots as a channel is about growth. It's about exploration. It's about figuring things out. It's about exploration. Did I mention exploration and growth? Okay, Open Mr. World, Mister Mister <laughs> KZ. <laughs> what is your opinion of the film? I don't know why this movie was actually good. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was funny. It was it was charming. And at times, you could. You could see some really weird shit, like when Keenan is making the burger at Mondo Burger and it just flies to the right. I assume a wire was t- attached to that burger because I don't know how it flew <laughs> like it, that. That was incredible. That said, I am confident. I am confident that our patrons are going to make us suffer for at least four months and nothing will ever beat this. So I'm going to have to give it a five. <laughs> Casey was his pessimism. Now, as as Casey pointed out, he doesn't know why this is this good, right? Right. I think that's a pretty common experience that most, if not all of us had. As a contrast, I would like to point out the Brady Brunch film was not as good as this. That was made in the same era. Oh, didn't they make more than one of well, those? Well, the one in the 90s gonna was... going to watch that? The one in the 90s was uh, not as good as this, and it was an appeal to adults. Late 90s, early aughts. And that was an appeal to adults, much in the same way this was an appeal to kids who were familiar with some other show on television. And somehow this was better made in Britain. <laughs> I, I don't want to say acted. It's been too long since I've watched it to remember the acting. There was also, uh, they also did the uh, Adams Family movies in the 90s. Okay, I but see, 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 see. See, we could end up watching a fucking Adams Family film, and then those were good. Exactly, though. They and had, I uh, would give that a five. <laughs> I think we'd have to come up with some kind of like, you get to ascend to not cursed heaven for those, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the scale get unlocked. This 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 pantheon of weird mythology. I I just I don't I don't. If our fucking cursed content series gets a karma system, I don't know how I'm gonna deal. It has its own, like, nobody it's made that's a good content club. No. No, <laughs> yeah, like Bob's nobody. Reprieve. <laughs> Bob's Reprieve good content club. We left Bob in the good content club where no one would find him. Yeah. <laughs> I just watched the movie alone. <laughs> yeah. God! It's like, uh... Bob's the only one who okay. deserves it. Bob loses his heart. The commentary track is just silence with an occasional... <laughs> Bob's like, this is all right. I deserve this. I'm a good boy. And it's called the Good Boy Club. (laughs) Yeah, it's just Bob watching something. Meanwhile, we're stuck watching some shit like fucking I Frankenstein. Bob's like, hey, I love the movie Versus. Don't say that. I love the movie Versus. And then you hear the door open and Vox is like, oh, hey, Bob, are you watching the movie Versus? And then they get to watch it together. Meanwhile, we're watching I Frankenstein. Oh, I was just assuming Dan's crying in the background editing. <laughs> Back to work. I'm so tired. I'm going to be, I'm with KZ. I, I expected this to be like maybe a two because I expected it to be really boring and schlocky in places. Mm-hmm. But listen, somebody getting hit in the face is always going to be funny. Yeah. If done right, yeah. It, it like, it wouldn't be funny in a movie like Epic Movie, which Carmen Electra was also in. 
where you would expect somebody to get hit in the face. But here they they withheld people getting brutalized just enough for it to always catch you off guard and be really funny. The opening, I feel like, is really strong. Like the, the op- opening like scene. The opening, has, yes, the, the opening has him knocking all those fucking people over, dragging the little girl, kidnapping a baby, and then the baby but getting slammed even down. Even right. that. And then there's... The, the stop motion and burgers. Then there's n- <laughs> yeah, that was also yeah, real good. That, was, that, that really set at home for the whole movie of, this is gonna be real weird. <laughs> he and got it, out and of bed fully like, clothed with shoes on. <laughs> yes. And then showered fully clothed. Yeah, that was... A- and... He has one of the Kel Mitchell. We're talking Kel Mitchell's character has one of the most delightfully '90s looking rooms in cinematic history. Where if if you were nine years old when this movie came out, you wanted that room. I mean, yes, Banana Lamp is pretty dope. I agree. Giant and, and he had a like a, he had a giant stereo as the his headboard. Yeah, this the and a big box of dots candy. This film was really solid in a way that is just confusing. And I do think that opening was really strong. I mean, overall, I think the writing, like the structure of the film and everything else is exceedingly strong. You know, you don't see it doing that thing that a lot of terrible fiction, uh, whether anime or a live action movie or TV series or Castlevania, the Netflix series does, where (laughs) they just don't know what to do for a huge chunk of the film, you know? It also uh, was more competent than a lot of movies because the duo have their tiff at the end of the first act instead of the end of the second. So they have to get back together in 10 minutes for the climax of the movie. I mean, yeah, it's just it. They didn't spend a lot of time being like, oh, we need to do this thing. But that's the thing we need to do. Yes, we need to do it. But how are we going to do it? Let's try to do it. We shouldn't try to do it. Let's try to do it, which is the thing a lot of fiction does. Or instead of having the characters they actually to do that, they need they need to give a stack. <laughs> right. See, that was a good moment, and it it, it it and this is the important thing. It didn't overstay its welcome. Good Burger is an infinitely better film than the Ghostbusters remake. The Ghostbusters none reboot. of the jokes went on too long. Really, yeah, yeah they all kind of moved. Did. Oh man, I they all kind of moved very briskly. I didn't think about that, but yeah, that's it. You really does just keep going. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. have anything that hangs. It's. Mm-hmm. It's not an SNL skit. It's got a stunning amount of good pacing chops, given that it's based on a sketch comedy show. Yeah, it's unreal. Like when he, like in a worse movie, when Kel was throwing ice cream at pursuers in the GTA mission scene, <laughs> <laughs> that could have gone on five minutes and been terrible. But it went on like thirty seconds, and then they crushed uh, Sinbad's mailbox as a penalty for being an authority figure. Yes. An important role in any children's film. Got to represent the youth. That was fucked up, though. Sinbad didn't do anything wrong in this entire movie and just kept getting his shit ruined. Well, look, did he do anything wrong in Jingle All the Way until the last 20 minutes where he went full on fucking psychopath? I forgot he was in that movie. <laughs> yeah, Jingle All the Way is a fucking classic. It really is. Don't Rock say that. that. What do you mean, don't say that? It is a fucking classic. We're going to have to watch it on the show now. Is it, Sin- is it Sinbad? It's- it's fucking Sinbad. Look that up. Or is it Martin? Shit. <laughs> I'm fucking. Yeah, I, 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 I thought it was uh, Martin. It might be Martin. But let me now, check. Now somebody needs to check. It might be Chris Rock. I didn't watch either Sinbad or Martin's show. They were like on UPN, I think. Oh, man, they had their own shows. Yeah. It was Sinbad. Okay. It, okay. It that's what Sinbad. I thought. I was, like, I was like, they're very different energies. Which is why I was sure it's Sinbad, but then everyone fucking questioned it. I was like, okay, maybe was, I don't fucking know. But yeah, no, like in Jingle All the Way, he like he's fine and he's just trying to get a thing for his son until the last twenty minutes where he fucking snaps and he's like, now I'm gonna kill this child. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie's just the first bit where it's like, maybe fuck you, Sinbad. <laughs> He's like, I did nothing wrong. They had him wear a goofy outfit, so then it was okay to, to make fun of him and get him ruin his life. I see, don't even know which his, movie you're talking car about, was, Bob. That's how bad that is. His car was destroyed, and he wanted his car to be fixed, which makes him the villain. Oh. Because he, he thought a teenager shouldn't just sit at home and watch cartoons for three solid months. Maybe he should get a job to pay for the damage he did. What a terrible man. Awful. The worst. And then at the end, his car just gets completely destroyed, even worse than the opening, for the crime of uh, <laughs> being alive. But really, yeah. 
Yeah, that, at that, that point, like that, that pretty much out. That's on Mondo Burger. Yeah, he can get his money back. <laughs> yeah, it's get, true. He can he get could, that lawsuit. He could. Sue it's a them. good ending for Sinbad. There's no way that isn't a chain. God, I don't know. It's com- is it because it see it it seems to be run by like a sociopathic fourteen year old. Right, like it's like that guy seems like he is the head of the company. Mm. <laughs> his henchmen are great. His henchmen are just like he went to his school and was like got the two football stars and is like you're my you're my enforcers now. And he has weird ties with the local asylum. It's a good. He's a good villain. He's a he is an ideal villain for a kids movie where he's cartoonish. He's exaggerated. He's a he's a sociopath for no reason whatsoever. A lot, enough things in this movie were off kilter in a malicious enough way. You know who he has the same energy as? You know who he has the same energy as? Go ahead. Uh, ben Stiller in Heavyweights. There you go. One person in our audience. You get it. That movie's good. I haven't seen it. Put it on the list. No. <laughs> Wait, if it's good, why does it go on the cursed content list? That's what... Because you doubt it. <laughs> and you must this learn. This is the sort of logic that led to us watching this. Right? On I think the hand, difference here is that we're just going, who? <laughs> the, you never saw Heavyweight? So it's like the spiritual prequel to Dodgeball. Because Ben Stiller plays the exact same character in both. Uh, both or literally everything? Hmm? No, it's it's the exact same. Mm-hmm. He, he plays like a sociopathic fitness enthusiast in heavyweights, and that's what he is in oh, Dodgeball. Wow. I thought that sentence ended with Zoolander. Don't besmirch Zoolander. That movie is incredible. Are we going to watch Zoolander 2 for a podcast? I will gladly watch Zoolander 2. If they that pay us. That movie is good. I was hearing that was terrible. Yeah, you were. They were wrong. I got upset because the best joke in the movie they spoiled in the trailer. That is they, always they, they, they very always upsetting. Time. Yeah. I uh, don't if I know I'm going to watch a thing, I don't watch trailers, which is why I thought of the idea for the series Gamer Premonitions. The villain in Zoolander is walking out of the prison and he's jacked like Bane, but then he pulls it off and it's a muscle suit and he's the same size as before. Yeah. yeah. That was, it, prison changed me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was an incredible scene. we have to scene. get to the segments now of this podcast. Okay. Oh, and I need to give my score because I didn't do that. Uh, four out of Thank five. Thank you. That we was have l- segments? I stopped breathing. For so long. Yes, now. we have. Uh, we need to talk about our favorite parts of the movie. Oh, okay. KZ, go. Uh, pass. Give me some time. <laughs> uh, unfortunate for you, I have a reverse card, sir. I have a skip card. Now, now it's Bob's turn. Fuck Bob. I have nothing. I guess it's your turn to say your favorite <laughs> scene. Honestly, it really is that opening. Like it's just nonstop he wakes up or like he has that bizarre dream with the talking hamburgers he wakes up in his uniform and cleans himself in his uniform it's just really good and now i'm trying to think of anything else because we already talked about that can i talk uh can i talk about mine sure um it's always a really unfortunate thing on this show that we can't say every scene with blank you know that we need to be more specific because sinbad is great in every scene he's in (laughs) <laughs> he is he's stunningly great i have no idea why sinbad fell off the face of the Me earth neither he's always delightful in everything i've he's literally in. never seen a thing in which he was bad so i also don't understand why he's been ghosted by hollywood i kind of think that maybe will smith absorbed his career oh, that's not fair will smith got so old enough to play you. those characters oh no no they just went well he's also handsome so will smith gets it oh no Whereas Sinbad, he's he's relatable. There's you can see humanity in Sinbad. It's okay. He was in the Lion Guard. The what? Oh no! Is that what I think it is? That's no, the uh, no. Lion King animated series. No. Been off that. Yeah, the one where they no. uh, the one where they revive Scar with necromancy. No. <laughs> oh, you're lying. And all the kids have like and the and the kids have like stand powers. I won't sit here. While you lie to our fan base about there being some fucking series called Lion Guard, we will move on now. Yeah, we'd have to, you know, make it a podcast against Dragon Ball GT. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're starting to bring in something remotely near the punching weight of Dragon Ball GT. You don't know. Right, I was like, it, it would, would probably still be in. better than GT. You know There's it no would There's no pedophile be. lion. I don't know that. <laughs> Uh, there, you're right. There could be a pedophile hyena. Maybe Carbon Electra plays a lot. Yeah, Ed. <laughs> Lady. KZ, are you ready to go or should I, or do you need one more second to prepare? Hmm. 
Yeah, give me another second to prepare. My favorite scene is probably the one with uh, Carmen Electra <laughs> being hurt. You were losing oh your God. mind. Because <laughs> it just kept happening. Like, oh, like her getting hit in the face with the golf club and then the golf ball knocking her unconscious is where I thought it would end. Yeah. But then they're driving and she's. When she got hit in the car. I lost my fucking mind because it was so unexpected. Mm -hmm. Because it goes, it goes, Kel, she's still unconscious. And then he just slams on the brakes. And it wasn't even like a joke sound effect. It was just like whack. Mm -hmm. And she immediately wakes up screaming. It it was pretty good. And I think I laughed almost until I couldn't breathe. I (laughs) I think the fucking Aikido toss was just the most insane. Oh, wow. We are just all the way in. It was and then she's on crutches. Yeah. I saw another good one. She was zanied into the hospital. Can I, can I talk about my favorite? Sure. Okay. Um, so since I can't do every scene with Sinbad, I'm going to I'm gonna have to go with the scene where, you know, Keenan hits his car and they just get the shot of Sinbad glaring a fucking death ray <laughs> into Keenan. It's just too perfect. That shot they have where the shot is through Sinbad's window. And then through, so it's out his passenger side. You see Sinbad in the foreground and Kanan in the background just fucking losing it. Just like, oh God, oh God. And then he looks over and he fucking loses it. Just, it's such a good scene. You don't see shit like that usually. And Sinbad in that scene, Since, of uh, course. You can't say all of X. I have, another, I have a, a not allowed one, which is every time somebody teleports. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's always a good moment. But by, by the way, that was mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> every time somebody when the, when the, teleports, when, like like early on in the movie where they do that really cool swipe transition, uh huh, Keenan, and then he just teleports behind him. It's really nothing good. Personnel's Keenan. That or um, when the main villain announces that he is committing crimes. That yes. was that was yes. that was really good. <laughs> that's that's a crime. We're committing hey, it, crimes. <laughs> It's like, hey, isn't that could couldn't that be illegal? It is. <laughs> it is illegal. Yes. <laughs> and then they call back to it a little bit later when they steal the ice cream. See, truck. when we do uh, Good Burger Two, we can meet that character's dad, Willem Dafoe. Oh, that would be really I, good. Oh my god, no, no, you no, were no. making amazing <laughs> casting at this very moment. No, they need to just bring him back because he can be out of jail. Yeah, yeah, we'll bring him back and have Willem Dafoe as his dad because obviously he had to get the money from somewhere for this Mondo Burger place. Oh my place. god, they'd have to bring back Sinbad. <laughs> he's not up to anything. He's not. He doesn't which have is, anything going which on. Which is so fucked yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, but suddenly he's all all about '90s stuff. <laughs> now it's cool and retro. <laughs> I, that'd be incredible. He's just got fucking <laughs> denim shirts on. <laughs> Um, when are we gonna watch the Meteor Man? When are we gonna watch Kazam? The w- <laughs> oh yes, Kazam! <laughs> oh my totally god, real. put that on a pole. Put that on the pole alongside Wild Wild West. A death match. We have like the death match of movies starring uh, weird comedy action movies starring popular black actors from the nineties. That is the best micro niche I've ever fucking heard of. <laughs> also, also, Nutty Professor 2. Uh. It can be like uh, The Meteor Man, which is Eddie Murphy, versus uh, Wild Wild West, versus the one KZ just said, versus the Cherokee Kid, the Sinbad Western. What? What, all right, ter- all right. what terrorist gave Sinbad a Western? Okay. Now, I, 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 know, I know we use these things to pitch things that will eventually be in a poll. And I was trying to think of cursed things that came out. And I'm like, what if we do one on the country bears? I feel like there's some potential there. Mm, we need to move on to the next segment. Yes, okay. please, please. I think, I think we need to put that on there. No. Get Christopher Walken in it. No. <laughs> yes. I was, uh, see, I was about to bring up Blank Man, and that's bad enough. Hmm? I, I would say that's correct. Blank Man. Blank Man. Damon Wayans superhero comedy from Bl- the 90s. Blank Man is just on the other side of too bad. It's like, it is, it's just barely passable. I will put myself through that. I don't want to. I've seen that movie like way too many times because it played on loop on Comedy Central for 12 years. That's terrible. Probably um, like a one. You know, this channel doesn't stand for Probably self-harm. Like- <laughs> yeah. What's our, uh, 
It's time for the least favorite oh, section. Oh, fuck. That, this is, I'm going to be honest. This, this is easy for me. I don't have one. This is the hardest this, ever. This, this is really easy for me. Okay, Bob. I'll go first. Let me hear it. The part where he's swimming in the sh milkshake machine. <laughs> Damn it. That, <laughs> that was mine. Oh, yeah. That's that was mine. really, really disturbing. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm voting for that one. It's gross. Yes. Like, but I mean, that's like the worst part of the movie to get it out of the way and then you, you just move on. You okay. don't think about it anymore. Here's my power move. No. No? That was a good scene. I enjoy that they did it. <laughs> I enjoyed that he turned the machine on and it bubbled and he was like, ooh, bubbles. <laughs> oh, please stop Delightful. it hurts. Also, the, the scene right after it cuts to Keenan drinking milkshakes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, it's the it's, worst. It's that's too. It's gross, but it was gross on purpose. It was too <laughs> competent for a kids' movie. <laughs> the worst scene in the movie is when, for a bit there, the love interest has has is is on this romantic small moment with Keenan, and is just like, I decided that you can't be too bad because he likes you. That was the worst part of the movie. I'm not saying it's a the romance subplot that didn't even go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's fair. It's not a fucking horrible scene, but... Yeah, it's like, it's okay. It's just... You, you know, it would have been mildly stronger film it, it, if it, it didn't happen. Nobody it. was getting hurt, and it wasn't funny. That whole character was kind of pointless. Espe yes. Yeah. Oh my god, she was there because of the not gays. Yeah. I, the, well, the weird thing is, she had like... I, I think she has some legit legitimate good jokes at the very beginning where she couldn't take someone's order because she wasn't the, the, the person who takes orders. That's right. Ed. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny yeah. because you get this impression she, she of her exists, that she's so incompetent. So you don't think that, and then she isn't once she has to be love interest. There's that scene where the the the, the fat dude ate the fly. That was the worst part. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. it, was, it was building. It was it building was, lore it for was, everybody there being incompetent. Don't say it's you know what, lore. You know, you know what? I'm gonna say this. I'm I'm gonna say this. The worst thing is that scene existed. The one I mentioned. And then the girl in the asylum didn't get to continue to be in the movie. We were robbed of a great character. She had birds in her hair. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you want to know the most bizarre part of this movie? Mm. Remember uh, Dweeby Eyebrow Kid? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, those eyebrows. He became the biggest fucking Chad in the world. Look at this motherfucker. Look at him. Oh my god. Oh no, he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's unbelievable. Josh Server, if you want to look him KZ, up. KZ, could you not lean that hard into your Squidward mode? I really don't need that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in hell. Okay. Confirmed. Look, the movie's so I'm going to go first enough. on this one because I'm going to steal who's I'm Kermit's a fucking frog. I'm going to steal everybody's answer for this one, so I'm going first, which is our I know favorite actor, and it's uh, the villain. The villain is the best actor in this movie. He's my favorite character. Okay, yeah, pretty good choice. Everything about him is hysterical. Uh, pretty, really strong <laughs> choice. I'm going second Sinbad. Are you fucking surprised? <laughs> Sinbad's in the goddamn film. Uh, um, alright, I've got mine. Uh, the main villain's henchman, the white one. <laughs> the white one. I mean, he was flexing while sitting the one down. That's like, it's true. <laughs> they, yes. They had different, his henchmen had different personalities. Yeah. Yeah. They, right. Wasn't that weird? They were both henchmen personalities, but they went in very different directions. Like the white one was dumb and kind of a suck up. And the black one kind of realized what a dipshit his boss was. <laughs> but he also played it cool. You know, he didn't fuck up like the white one did. He's like, he's like, I'm getting, I'm getting paid. It's fine. He's like, uh, yeah, no, and neither I ain't of them, saying and shit. neither of them get, and both of them escape being arrested at the end. Good I think one of them was on a stretcher. <laughs> no, that was just a random employee. Uh, they were both talking to the police. They both immediately <laughs> turned fed evidence. <laughs> I think, I think the most interesting detail of this movie is that because directly because of Keenan's actions. Directly because of Kel's actions, people are like dead or seriously harmed, pulled out on a stretcher at the conclusion of the film. Maybe they just fainted in shock. D right. Explosions went off everywhere and the building's falling apart and they, they're, just, they're just dead. Yeah, don't worry about it. Fell on some. It's fine. They had a case of the vapors. It's fine. They saw a hamburger explode. They're American. That's like a war crime to them. They passed out. <laughs> they have PTSD now. 
They had fun. I think it's really amazing that in the first maybe 15 minutes of the film, they bring up, man, those Mondo burgers are fucking huge. And then they don't revisit that tangent for another 40 minutes. Yeah, I thought it was going to be something reasonable, yeah. too. Like, oh, they use lots of, like, they basically, they're just bread. Right. But no. They no. Just, yeah, it's not they're, they're, um, the Umbrella Corporation, and they're putting the T-virus into the burgers. <laughs> See, that's that's the way this movie could have been heightened if the Arch went full-on Wesker. If he went full-on Wesker, and he was like, three minutes is all I need, and just started fucking fighting both of them. He eats one of those burgers that's super big, <laughs> and then he looks like gets Wesker, his actually. Power. He gets, like, the Joker at the end of Batman Arkham Asylum. <laughs> yeah, he he drinks the, uh, tr- the fake chemical and just turns into the final boss of Arkham Asylum. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. That'd be raw as shit. They couldn't afford it, but it would have been great. Man. I have a I have a question because uh-huh. I think I may I think I may have missed it. Yeah. Um. Wh- why are they drugging the burgers <laughs> to make them to big. make them bigger? It. I know. It makes why? A, why though? <laughs> because oh, people see so value they can in sell bulk. a burger that's three times the. Su- yeah, yeah, it's basically like our burger is half a pound and is the same cost as good burgers puny quarter pounder okay. thank you because I was about to have a moment of like, did they not actually have a reason to make them big? <laughs> Do you live in America? Have it? you eaten at Hardee's? <laughs> <laughs> it just <laughs> I usually get their ham and cheese. It's alright. Here's a very boomerish take. Oh no. It was refreshing to watch a movie where every shot didn't have a thousand computer visual effects up my fucking ass. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's always nice. I, I there is something just it's, it's, about it's nice to see to know that everything in the movie was basically real outside the first scene. The first scene had, like, the stop motion and the green screen shot, but then, like, almost everything else was just real. Uh, What I appreciate is going an entire movie and basically every demographic of human being was brutalized. (laughs) (laughs) What the Even a baby. Baby, children, old, old people, old woman, old man, black security guard. (laughs) <laughs> Dude, what is wrong? No, that's <laughs> awesome. It's like everybody gets one, cracks knuckles. <laughs> Look, he didn't had it out for him. It's okay. You're fucking deranged. <laughs> no, I just like seeing the love uh, spread around. It's about equality. They did a really realistic portrayal of Florida <laughs> by having just an insane asylum that that will lit- evil businessmen can just have you sent yeah, to. No, very accurate. They're like, you know, Baker's you know this makes sense. <laughs> this makes sense. Dan's Floridian. He would think like this. I'm just, I'm just saying. I like to see it spread around. I've seen enough crappy With the 90s. Ten year old grumpy. I've seen enough 90s films which are really gross and fucking terrible. Where it's like this gay character hit on a main character and he got beat up, but it's okay because we laugh at the gays. And it's just like 90s. Stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> <laughs> there was like no. one gay joke that was. It wasn't like barely yeah, there. Yeah, it wasn't distasteful. It honestly was like. Like, really subtle, almost? Where he was just like, he he goes, oh, is it because it wouldn't be in the natural order? And he puts up quotation marks. And it's like, okay. And then that was it. There was no other weird gay joke in the entire movie. Yeah. Like, a you tasteful get, movie. I don't I'm get it. I'm not that. sure how many 90s films everybody's gotten back and watched again. <laughs> <laughs> not, not regularly. Dan... I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry was not that long ago. I'm just saying, like, the 90s were pretty bad. The early aughts were weirdly worse. <laughs> I'd believe it. Yeah. Look, all, I I'm, guess the, all I, I'm saying is the worst thing these also people the late could night, make, Also the late aughts. All I'm saying is the worst thing these people could make me relive is Malibu's Most Wanted. Oh, that movie's raw. We gotta put that in the book. <laughs> no, that movie is not raw. I've seen <laughs> It is raw. I think I've seen that like 30 times. Are you fucking kidding me? I got confused. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I got, I I thought, uh, I thought Mal, I thought KZ was talking about the new kid. I can't fucking deal with you, KZ. How the fuck have you seen that film 30 fucking times? I've seen it like four times. We need to see that for a podcast. I don't think I've watched no, any movie that'll 30 be part times. Of, Good lord. That'll be part of another set. There's a lot of those movies for some reason of like white kid is thug in like the the early aughts. There's a weirdly huge number of them. 
Usually they're not Kino. the central character of a movie that is exclusively about that one idea. Uh, God. I guess I should do my Whoa, favorite character. Wrong? Who's your favorite character, Bob? It was Keel. God. It was Keel? <laughs> yes. Not Kel? Kel. God, I, look, I don't watch all that. Come I don't actually on. know the name. What are you I mean, doing? that's that's fair. You haven't seen the show. You haven't seen the I, other Ed. show. Ed. Yeah, yeah Ed. Ed. Ed was funny. There, there. Some of the, some of his acting was really bad. Was uh, all the time, like way oh, too you much. Mean the, ha, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. That was <laughs> yeah. That dude. was too much sometimes. But there were lots of good moments. I really liked the part where they, I like the part where he turns the machine on and it just creates <laughs> bubbles. No, <laughs> I like the part where they like they're breaking out of the asylum. Yeah, they throw a chair or they throw <laughs> Keenan through the window. <laughs> Is what a great fucking film! <laughs> okay, like that no. sentence. <laughs> yeah, that was As raw. I said, everyone gets to be. <laughs> what then, a great time! Then when Ed had to get out of the window, he just jumps through at the other window that's not broken out yet. It's great. Yeah, there's just a lot of like good writing? dumb guy humor yeah. writing, and I, I think it really nails it without being offensive. Yeah, uh, this is a really good uh, like slapstick kids comedy. Yeah. But it says hell and ass. <sighs> I think there's one of each because it's only PG, yeah. so you're only allowed one. to have one of right. each. Just one. Like, I'm kind of surprised they didn't say ass. Uh, by the way. Look at the camera like, ha we just said that. They basically did. It was the old man, and he did kind of stare at the camera after he said it. He's like, ass. By the way, KZ, we can set up uh, Malibu's Most Wanted against kicking it old school. <laughs> My vote's on kicking it old school because I don't want to get my PTSD triggered with fucking Malibu's Most Wanted. And even if kicking it old school's worse, it won't trigger memories. <laughs> it, it, it's okay. You're screwed. The audience knows you don't want this. <laughs> You've been too vocal about it, Dan. Fine. Prove to them. Do it, audience. Prove to everyone that you all hate me. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> they don't hate you. They just they want to see you suffer. Heart has to become hard. <sighs> a, a simple challenge. <laughs> <laughs> After years of abuse like this, I'm just I'm just gonna turn into Fraser. You know that, right? I'm just gonna be some pompous asshole who's completely callous and narcissistic by the end of this. That's you already. <laughs> that joke was left on the floor for you, KZ. I'm glad you picked it up. <laughs> KZ doesn't believe in wasting food. Waste not want one. <laughs> I, I scrolled down to the Wikipedia page for Kick It at Old School. It just says, critical response. Reviews for the film were, ex were extremely negative. The film received a 2% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, wow. What? Okay, now you have to look it up. What the fuck is Malibu's most wanted? You mean Kick It at Old School? No, he just, no, I meant the score. No, I, mean, I meant the, oh, score the score for Malibu's score. most wanted. Oh, I'm not having a stroke here, guys. I'm not. I'm not like. What's this movie I've seen in fear? Uh, thirty-one percent. Oh, wow, that's how, a big difference. How the hell can you be twenty-nine percent worse than that film? <laughs> that's what we're here to find out. No, I. I regret the series. Maybe it's canceled. I don't know. Yep, uh, kicking it old school is two percent. Maybe it's canceled. Two percent with forty-three <laughs> reviews. Dan starts this series, no fears. Dan gets to episode three, one fear. <laughs> so, don't worry, I'll produce. I'll produce a stellar voting list for this. One, I, one fear: something being worse than Malibu's most wanted. It's okay you though. These, these are all going to be I so like, much better. I than like how this is bad, but you're not willing to edit it out like the other one. <laughs> It's too much now. The, the show would be like 40, like 15 minutes long. <laughs> it'd be, it would be like 10 minutes straight of censored sounds. <laughs> Speaking of which, Casey, I really like when you edited Big Think to mention number eight. And it just, instead of you finding a censored sound, you got on your mic and went, <laughs> Yeah, good. I'm glad you listened. That was so good. <laughs> Wait, what did, what did he censor? Uh, nothing. Don't worry about it. We don't talk about the dark game. We don't talk about 15. <laughs> oh, okay. We talked about 15 again. <laughs> no, it was the bouncer, you idiot. <laughs> oh, oh. By the way, I lost my copy of the bouncer and spent three hours searching for it. Three hours? Fuck. 
We need our. That's twice as long as the game. We need our <laughs> last. <the> <laughs> <laughs> we're losing our minds because the movie was good we need the last uh thoughts on good burger um good burger may be the best show we watch in the series because we live in a cruel world um i uh i'm sad that all that res- at the end of recording all of this all that remains in my heart is fear that something is worse than malibu's most wanted bob what are your last thoughts I, I really like the movie. I'm really glad that we could come here today and uh, watch this. Not something terrible. Not something made by some internet celebr- or celebrities. And even all those other films we were talking about, they aren't made by Channel Awesome. They have to be better than those first two things we watched. Right. Yeah. Oh. We crushed a humanity at the bonfire, so we're human again after Kickassia and Suburban Nights. We can feel joy again. Yeah. I, I really look forward to us oh. watching Isolation 119. What's up, Bob? Dan, does that mean this is like Dark Souls? Fucking God. KZ, what what are your last thoughts? Uh, I'm exhausted uh, thinking about the things we're doing in the future, but this was great. I thought I was going to ironically like this, but I unironically liked it. Yeah. That's where I am. It's a real surprise. I don't think any of us could have been like, yeah, Good Burger's an excellently made film with great comedy writing. It, G- Good Burger was a stunningly competent film and not just trash made for children. Like, there, there's so many more condescending writing tropes that were at a fever pitch around that time that could have reared their ugly heads here, but not a single one of them did, and that's shocking. You could change the you could change the soundtrack a little bit, and this movie would be timeless. Yeah, I mean, not that that means much. It's a Wonderful Life is timeless, and that thing is a piece of shit, and everyone always knew until they forgot. The Super Metroid is bad of movie takes. <laughs> no, no. When that movie came out, it, it bombed out of theaters. Reviewers skewered it, and then a bunch of cheap uh, television stations paid for the rights for cents on the dollar. Or actually, no, it became public domain. That's why they started airing it every Christmas, because it was free. And that's when it became a holiday classic. Just like eating dog shit on a biscuit. That's how, uh, that's how the Beastmaster became successful enough to get a sequel. They just gave the rights oh my to God. Uh, cable, cable networks back when there was nothing on cable. So shit. the Beastmaster was shown like 18 times a day on most that's channels. That's fucking amazingly brilliant. What is the Beastmaster? Is it cursed? Oh, that's going on the ah! list. <laughs> Stop doing this. Well, we got to stop recording this. So that way we stop giving you all knives. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank uh, you for thank supporting you. us on Patreon.com. You all thank have you. a Pod lovely Lords. day. <laughs> thank you, Podlord. <laughs> this Gigaboots video was brought to you by our magnanimous executive producers. Vincent Pover, Nicholas Cameron. E. Lee Broyles. Brendan O'Sullivan. Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Shadow in the Darkness, Dryzart, and Red Blaze 27. And also these guys. Head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today so you can try to be as cool as these people.